Hello everyone, uh, due to issues with the audio recording yesterday, I decided that I'm going to uh, re-record -re this talk and put it out there for people to check it out in the future. So yesterday's talk, I was talking about uh, Laravel Vapor. And before we start, before we start talking about Vapor, let me just give you some background. Uh, we have at Laravel, we have three commercial products related to deploying and serving your applications. We have Laravel Forge, to help you uh, manage servers. And we have Laravel Envoyer to help you uh, provide uh, or help you uh, deploy your applications with zero downtime. And then we have Laravel Vapor that we launched uh, back in August. And it helps you host your uh, Laravel applications in the serverless environment. So this talk, we are going to talk about Laravel Vapor. And first, let's let's check or let's think what's, what's wrong with servers, why people uh, suddenly talk about serverless and why people don't want to use servers anymore and it's not a cool thing. Let's just agree that servers are there. And when you hear the term serverless, it doesn't mean that there is no server. There are servers, but the, the difference is that you don't have to worry about them. In a typical server, when you have like a, a server that you created on Laravel Forge, you have to install uh, Nginx and PHP, and probably your application will need to store data in the form of uh, cache or sessions or queue jobs, or relational data, so on and so forth. So you have to install something like Redis, maybe uh, manage the disk storage, maybe install MySQL or PostGres, and maybe you also need Supervisor, which uh, is a tool that helps you run uh, ongoing processes like the Laravel workers, the queue workers, and it keeps it maintains and makes sure that the processes are up 24 7 so you need to have supervisor running on your server and you also need cron tab so you can schedule jobs to run at a specific time and if your infrastructure grows larger if you're receiving a lot of traffic one server might not be enough for you you might want to have or you might want to scale your infrastructure to run multiple servers. So you install a load balancer and several servers under that load balancer. And probably you put your database in a separate server. You put your cache in a separate server. Also have your worker processes running, running in one or two servers. And as I said, if the, if the infrastructure of the traffic reaching your application is not that big, one server will be OK. But in case you are receiving variable uh, traffic or you're receiving a lot of traffic, you probably need more servers. And you need to scale those servers so you don't pay uh, for a lot of servers while your application is not being used a lot. And at the same time, you don't want to have uh, only a few servers while you are receiving a lot of traffic. And that causes your, your servers to crash. So probably you will need to scale servers from time to time. And having to deal with the infrastructure and also uh, having to manage all these services or all the packages and the programs running on each and every single server, that's not fun. It's not, it's not what we are supposed to do as developers. As developers, we only need to build web applications and deploy it and for people to use it. And we need to find a way so we don't have to worry about PHP installations, MySQL backups, managing servers or load balancing, all, all the things. We only need to focus on our application. And that's when uh, that's where cloud providers uh, can be of a help. So AWS or Amazon Web Services is one of several cloud providers that will allow you to focus on your application while it takes care of several other things for you. So while you're working on the application and focusing on the business logic, AWS provides you with several services and uh, you configure these services, you configure how they, they work together, and you just don't worry about the uh, application running in the cloud anymore. You just build and deploy, and you, AWS will take care of everything. So the services that we, we are interested in now is first the ABI Gateway. It's, uh, it's a service that receives requests from the customers, HTTP requests. And it directs them to either your servers or your uh, uh, containers if you're running Docker, so on and so forth. A similar service is Amazon Elastic Load Balancing. And it works the same way as ABI Gateway. There is also Amazon S3. And it's, uh, it's a service that allows you to 
stored files, so you don't have to worry about disk space, uh, disk space and managing disk space on your own servers. There is also CloudWatch where you can point all the logs from all the Amazon services, so you can have a central place where you can check all the logs about the services running, and also you can use CloudWatch to schedule jobs and uh, run uh, maybe a Docker container or run a command on one of your servers, so on and so forth. And there is Amazon RDS, and it's a service where you just decide that you want a MySQL database or a PostgreSQL database, and it takes care of managing the database, scaling, and handling backups for these uh, for these databases, so you don't have to worry about it. There is also Amazon SQS, and it's a service where you push your queue jobs to that service, and it will invoke your application to run the jobs in the queue. Uh, whenever there are jobs available. So you don't have to worry about managing queues anymore when you use Amazon uh, SQS. There is also Amazon Elastic Cache. If your application needs to store cache, and it probably uh, does, uh, you just send the cache to Elastic Cache, and you read from Elastic Cache, and you don't need to worry about uh, handling a server for running Redis or um, taking backups of the data or scaling that server so on and so forth. All this is taken care uh, of with, uh, with Amazon Web Services. And there's also DynamoDB, and it's a key value store that you can use to store maybe your cache, maybe store some data related to your application, and so on and so forth. So besides all these services, there is AWS Lambda. And Lambda is, is the one most interesting uh, service that we as Weber user, or people interested in Weber in general, are going to uh, to find because it's how it's 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 actually the serverless part of all this infrastructure. We're going to talk about AWS Lambda just in a bit, but right now, uh, let's see if you moved your application from or you moved your structure from servers and put it or delegate the work of servers and the work of maintaining your infrastructure delegated to AWS, you end up not having to worry about your servers anymore or your services that, that are running on the server, but you have to worry about configuring all these AWS services so they work together and they serve your application in, in a good way. And that's, that's not easy, actually. So it's not easy to manage the uh, PHP and Nginx yourself and all these services. It's also not easy to configure the AWS services to work for you. And that's where Laravel Vapor comes. Laravel Vapor stands between your application and all the AWS services. So you focus on your application, and Laravel Vapor will configure all the Amazon Web Services for you, so you don't have to worry about it. So now you are truly only focusing on your application. You don't have to worry about managing the infrastructure, and you don't have to worry about managing the cloud. Now let's let's talk about servers a little bit. And in a typical application, or you're running on a server, you need PHP installed, and you need up your application on that server in order for it to start serving requests and start running queue jobs, so on and so forth. So what happens with AWS Lambda is that we replace that server with AWS Lambda, and you compile a PHP runtime and your application and upload them to AWS Lambda. And Lambda, you can think of it as a container that you only pay for when it's serving services. So imagine that you have a huge server, and that server, you don't have to pay a monthly fee for that server. It's not a fixed fee. You only have to pay for the number of milliseconds that requests to your application took uh, to run on this server. That's basically what Lambda is. You don't have to worry about servers. You just uh, configure AWS Lambda. And whenever a request comes to your application, Lambda will run the request and return the response. And you will only pay for the number of milliseconds that uh, the Lambda uh, ran your application on. And it's quite amazing, because you don't have to worry about servers. You don't have to worry about scaling, because if you if you're if you're receiving a lot of traffic and you need more lambda containers aws will take care of that for you it will create more containers to run your uh, application and 
if your application grows even more in traffic, it will contain it will create more containers. And whenever you don't need any any of this traffic, Lambda will go back to running only one container. So you don't have to worry about scaling. You will only pay for what you use. If your application receives high traffic, you will pay for the number of milliseconds that all the uh, concurrent users uh, have been hitting your application uh, use to, to, to receive requests or to receive responses. And if you're not receiving a lot of traffic, you will only pay. Uh, actually, you might end up not paying anything as with our staging environments and so on. You just uh, receive a little bit or few requests. You end up not paying anything. So, so that's basically what AWS Lambda is. And the way Weber configures AWS Lambda for you is that we have three different uh, images for these containers, the HTTP Lambda, and the CLI Lambda, and the Q Lambda. And we invoke or we configure AWS to invoke the three Lambdas whenever uh, a specific event comes in. So for example, the HTTP Lambda is invoked whenever a request comes to the ABI gateway or the uh, load balancer. And the CLI Lambda is invoked whenever CloudWatch decides, or if you say, we set up the scheduler for you, so CloudWatch will invoke the CLI Lambda every minute to check if you have any scheduled jobs that need to run. And as for the Q Lambda, we configure AWS SQS to invoke the Lambda every, every time there are jobs available in the SQS queue. And we also configure uh, the rest of the infrastructure in the cloud. We configure AWS for you for the three lambdas to communicate with all the other AWS services like ElastiCache, DynamoDB, Amazon S3, and Amazon RDS. So we took care of all of this for you while you only worry about building the application and maintaining the application yourself, which is actually the job that you want to do. You don't have to worry about infrastructure. You don't have to worry about the cloud, Laravel Vapor, will take care of that for you. And for each uh, lambda of the three lambdas, you can configure the memory and the timeout and the concurrency. And as we said, you pay for the number of milliseconds that your lambda uh, runs, but also the price of each 100 millisecond, because you, you pay each 100 millisecond. The price for each 100 millisecond varies between, uh, depends on the memory that you allocate for the container. And you have between 128 to 3,000 megabytes of memory that you can allocate. And also the timeout, and it's a maximum 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. You can configure any of the three lambdas to timeout. For example, you can configure the HTTP lambda to timeout after 10 seconds. So if a request took more than 10 seconds to send a response, the container will timeout. You can uh, configure the queue. Uh, lambda separately, and you can configure the CLI Lambda separately. Also, as for the concurrency, you can configure the concurrency for each Lambda uh, separately. And you have a, a thousand uh, concurrent, or you, you are allowed to serve thousand concurrent requests or CLI commands or queue drops per account at the same time. So you have you need to configure the three lambdas, and you need to configure all the projects that are running on the same AWS account to fall within those uh, 1,000 concurrent executions. And we'll talk in detail about this in other videos. But just I wanted to give you a hint of uh, what serverless is, and what AWS Lambda is, and what Laravel Vapor does for you. So basically, all you have to do is build your application, and Laravel Vapor will take care of everything after that. It will take care of configuring AWS, and it will take care of uh, configuring Lambda, so you don't have to worry about scaling, and you only pay for what you use. And yesterday, or the, the other day, I posted on Twitter for people to send me questions so I can answer it in the, in the live talk today. And of course, the common question was, uh, how much am I going to pay? Because if you are scaling indefinitely, if you have the flexibility to scale however you want, you must worry about how much you're going to pay because you don't want to uh, pay so much if you receive uh, a lot of traffic, even if that traffic is not uh, legit, even if you, are if you are having attacks or something. So as I said, there are two types of, of, uh, of costs for the running on AWS Cloud. 
And the first are fixed costs like the Amazon RDS, where you pay a fixed amount or the, a fixed number uh, each month. Uh, depends on the size of the database instance that you want uh, Amazon to create and maintain. And there are variable costs like, for example, Lambda. And depends on the size of your application, depends on the traffic that you are expecting, depends on the data that you need to store. That's uh, how much you're going to pay. And it's, it's really hard to think about it when you're not sure how, mu how much traffic you are going to receive. But for example, if your application is just starting, it's not going to receive a lot of traffic, you can consider that you are only going to pay uh, the fixed price for the Amazon RDS and maybe Amazon Elastic Cash if you use it. The variable costs will depend on the traffic. And if it's not a lot of traffic, it's not uh, uh, if, if there is no traffic at all, you, you will end up not paying anything for these uh, services. And for here comes another question where people are worried about DDoS attacks since the Lambda scales indefinitely. If you receive a DDoS attack, you might end up paying a lot. But there are several things that you can do about it. First thing that you can configure an alarm via Vapor. Uh, you can configure an alarm to send you an email or send you on Slack whenever uh, there is a spike in traffic. So you know that something doesn't feel right, something is wrong if you're receiving uh, traffic that you're not expecting. And when this happens, there are many things that you can do. You can, for example, you can limit the concurrency uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of your service. So you don't end up uh, uh, using a thousand containers and paying for all these requests. You can limit the concurrency, so a lot of requests attack may fail and there is also you can use a service like cloudflare to secure your application against the DDoS attacks so the uh, the attack comes with a minimal loss and let's just say that there is no hundred percent foolproof solution for DDoS attacks but you can of course you can uh, control the side effects of this attack uh, and decrease the cost or decrease the uh, the amount of money that you were going to spend uh, while a DDoS attack is being is being uh, while you are a being a victim of a DDoS attack, and also there is a question when when you should not consider using Vapor. In my personal opinion, if you have uh, if you are happy with your current infrastructure, you shouldn't you move to serverless. For example, if you have one server and you use a service like Laravel Vapor to maintain that server for you. It takes care of uh, maintenance, it takes care of updates, so on and so forth. You're not scaling the servers, you're not uh, worrying about the infrastructure, and you're happy with your current setup, that's fine. You don't need to move to serverless. However, if you're, if you're building an application of where your current application requires uh, managing a large infrastructure, like managing a lot of servers and the scaling and uh, all this stuff, then Weber is really a good solution for all this hassle. You only configure it and it will take care of all the scaling work and all the uh, other work uh, for you. And another question where I just, I received, it's, it's related to what if you want special extension, a special PHP extension? Uh, since you don't control the server, you don't have a server, how, how are you going to install the PHP, a, a different PHP extension? We at Weber, we compiled a PHP runtime uh, with all the common extensions that we uh, upload to your Lambda containers for your application to use. However, if there is an extension that you want to use that is not available in the, in the the Vapor runtime, you can fork the Vapor runtime because it's available open source, install that extension, build the, your own layer and publish it to uh, AWS and use that layer instead of the uh, layer that Vapor provides. So basically these are all the common questions that I received on Twitter and I'll happily answer any question that you send me on Twitter or you send me as a comment on this video. And I hope this talk was useful, and uh, I hope the quality of the audio is better than the talk from yesterday. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.